I'm holding on to faith Cause I know you'll make a way And I don't always understand I don't always get to see But I will believe it I will believe it You make mountains move You make giants fall You use songs of praise To shake prison walls I will speak to my fear I will preach to my doubt You were faithful then You'll be faithful now I'm standing on your word Calling heaven down to earth I will fight my enemies This will end in victory Yes, I will believe it Yes, I will believe it You make mountains move You make giants fall. You use songs of praise to shake prison walls. I will speak to my fear and I will preach to my doubt. You were faithful then. You'll be faithful now. You were faithful then. You'll be faithful now. And I shake prison walls I will speak to my fear I will preach to my town you were faithful then will be faithful now you make mountains move you make giants fall you use songs of praise to shake prison walls I will Speak to my fear, I will preach to my town. You are faithful then, you'll be faithful now. You were faithful then, you'll be faithful now. the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness swore through the shadows of my soul the work is finished the end is written jesus christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. 
the cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ, my living. its grip on me you have broken every chain there's salvation in your name jesus christ my living hope and keep the morning that seal the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the side has no claim on me. Jesus, you are all to us. Let the glory of your name be the passion of the church. Let the righteousness of God be a holy flame that burns. Thank you so much to Nate and Nolan for leading us in that time of worship and creating a space for us to offer up our thanksgiving to God for who God is and what God has done. In so many ways, it's going to lead us right to what we're talking about for the last three weeks of R&R this year. Chris Garcia and I, over the next three weeks, are going to be looking at a phrase that often occurs in the Bible, give thanks. And with November already upon us and Thanksgiving quickly approaching, this will certainly be a topic our culture thinks about and perhaps in a unique way this year wrestles with in the upcoming days and weeks. Now, full transparency, I'm recording this on a Monday, so I don't know who won and who lost or if that's even been decided yet, but the election, COVID-19, the effects of isolation and loneliness, the disruption of our regular schedules, the list could go on and on of the different reasons why we don't or wouldn't have a spirit or attitude of thanksgiving. It's like 2020 has cast this large shadow on what's intended to be a bright and festive time. But here's the thing, what we find in scripture are faithful disciples, men and women who certainly face the dark shadows of their own day and still think the light wins. People throughout the entire Bible who are facing persecution from political and religious systems, some even being cast out of their own families or thrown in jail for pledging allegiance to Yahweh and Jesus, and yet they give thanks. And so not in ignorance towards what's going on, but rather with full acknowledgement Let's spend a couple of weeks reminding our hearts and minds, our attitudes and actions to give honest, real, sincere thanks and invite others to do the same. So if you have a Bible, I'd like to invite you to turn to Colossians chapter 3 and let's start reading from verse 1. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Now let's pause right here because we have to establish a baseline. Whatever comes next is for the Christian. Whatever instruction and encouragement and leading that we read in the following verses is for the disciple of Jesus who has found new life in him. If you have come out of union with death and into union with Christ through the forgiveness of sins, 
then you have in your possession what is the bedrock of this instruction, new life. And if you're watching this right now and that's not you, please don't tune out. My hope would be that you would hear what is said and it would draw you back to a loving God who has made a way for you and me to be forgiven, find joy, and give genuine thanks. So listen in and then let's talk about the first step. But none of us should fool ourselves that what comes next and the idea of giving thanks is possible without Jesus and what he's done on our behalf, the new life that he gives. Okay, now let's get back to the passage. So if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death what belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these, God's wrath is coming upon the disobedient. And you once walked in these things when you were living in them. But now... Put away all the following, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and filthy language from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self. You are being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your Creator. In Christ there is not Greek and Jew, circumcision and uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, slave and free, but Christ is all and in all. Now this is pretty matter of fact to Paul what happens when someone becomes a Christian. Their old self, marred and broken by sin, is put to death and they experience resurrection into the new life hidden in Christ. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. So Paul says this should create change. Put to death the things in which your old, now dead self once walked and participated in. There's no room for it in a life hidden in Jesus. And what also seems matter of fact to Paul is the ongoing process as well. Notice it's not you were dead, now you are alive and also left alone. No, your life hidden with Christ in God is being renewed in knowledge according to the image of your creator. It's being renewed. It's ongoing. This process is happening at all times. It wasn't a moment and you're done. It's an ongoing being. And if we miss this, I think we'll be in a world of hurt when it comes to giving thanks. I was recently reminded of the difference in outlook and action between an attitude of being versus one that is done. Now, the other morning, as my daughter Lizzie and I were getting in the car so that I could take her to school, she threw me for a bit of a loop. You see, as she was buckling in, she said completely out of the blue, warning, most Function, functions are unavail, unavail. And at that point, I turned around and looked at her with what must have been a rather inquisitive look because she stopped and just looked at me and said, what? I said, Lizzie, what are you talking about? What are you saying? And she just said, dad, I'm reading. I turned around and there on my dash was the warning paragraph that appears every time I start my car the warning paragraph that I apparently ignore and do not read every time I start the car. See, Lizzie is in the process of learning how to read. It's her attitude and mindset, and it has created a hunger in her to grow in this area. She wants to read chapter books. She asks how to pronounce words that she can't read. She's not satisfied with reading just one book. She asks for the whole series. Why? Because learning to read isn't done and over. It's happening. It's being. And so she sees and reads words of warning on a dashboard that the old man in the front seat didn't see and didn't read because he has no hunger to learn and grow in reading. See, it's done for me. It's being for her. Now, watch where Paul goes next. Therefore, as God's chosen ones... Holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if anyone has a grievance against the other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, 
so you are also to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity, and let the peace of Christ, to which you were also called in one body, rule your hearts and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell richly among you in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Because of what is continually happening, replace the old with the new. Goodbye to evil desires and hello to the things that are of Christ. Let this change impact how you deal with your friends and your neighbors. Take what you have received and are receiving and then turn around to give it to others. This will produce thanks as you encourage one another. And then finally, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the one who has given you life, giving thanks to God the Father through him. And there's our phrase, give thanks. And notice it's not just something we say, it's also something we can do. Our deeds in Christ, our deeds in this new life, our deeds that come as we are being renewed, they give thanks. Now think back to Aunt Lizzie for a second. She's had teachers and parents, friends and grandparents help her get to where she is. They've sounded out words, they've taught principles, and they've been patient towards her as she grows in reading. And as this has happened, we've certainly done our best to encourage her to say thanks and give thanks to these people. But her actions in the car that morning, they do the same thing. See, by living out what they have taught her, by putting it into action and reading the warning, her growth was on display. Her hunger to read was seen and heard, and her deed gave thanks to those who had gotten her to that moment. You see, the more I begin to understand that I am being renewed, the more I begin to understand that I didn't just have a one-time moment with God and then we were done, but that the Spirit is active and moving, helping me take off my old dead self and put on my new life, the more I'll see the opportunities to give thanks in word and deed. I'll be anxious and hungry for what God has in store. I'll be mindful and remember the hopelessness of life without Christ that has been replaced with the hope-filled life found in Him. And I'll see the warning screens that give me a chance to read, and I'll read them. And it won't be perfect. I, I won't know every word, but like Lizzie, I'll get to, through my actions, through my deeds, offer and give thanks. So my prayer for us, Sugar Grove, is that we would, in word and deed, live lives that give thanks to God the Father through Jesus, minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, that we would give thanks. And my prayer is that the foundation of our thanks would be lives being renewed. The Spirit of God, minute to minute, hour to hour, day to day, removing the old and giving in us the new that this process would include new eyes and ears to see and hear the opportunities all around us to give thanks. It's been so good to be with you. We'll see you next week. Grace and peace. Mm -hmm.